Here's, here's one from Christy Russell. She says, uh, Matt's song with Slash was amazing. Um, ask them what the concept is behind the new album cover, if it's supposed to be the Rev or a little girl. Oh. Now, if you guys want to or touch on that. Oh. Hmm? Well, uh, let's, let's think about that. No, um, the album cover, I don't really want to give away the concept because I see a lot of kids online are discussing it. And I think that they should kind of, you know, have some things be revealed uh, <laughs> slower than sooner. Slow it's, and painful. It's like a slow a slip, strip tease as opposed to just ripping everything off. Is it, yeah, is it Jimmy or is it a girl? It's one of those. Yeah. Uh, oh! You're, you're definitely right. It's a girl named Jimmy. That's all we get. It's no, a girl named Jimmy. It's a, it's a, um, obviously it's the death bat, um, you know, over the Red's grave, and there's a frightened girl kind of getting taken into the nightmare world. And that's what I get from it. <laughs> but I enjoy the cover. I think it's really cool. When did you say the new Avenged Sevenfold album comes out? The 27th of July? Those are great questions. They just keep coming. I love, it. I love this. This is great. Every 60 seconds. <laughs> Do you read what your fans write on websites to see what their thoughts are? Like Death Bat News. Um, yeah, every once in a while. I love to see the fans, especially right now with Jimmy, all the support we've got. We've seen that from all the fans, and Death Bat News is definitely a place to get Avenged Sevenfold News. Mm. I definitely... Uh, find most of my events on full news on Death Bat News. <laughs> I don't know what's going on half the time. But Sinister Gates is doing right now. <laughs> it's like things. Oh, really? He's fine? Yeah. It's true. There's all these things will come out. I have no clue they came out. And then I can go to Death Bat News and it's there. So it's like, okay, well, I guess I'll just do that. I guess I'll just read it on that website. Yeah. <laughs> and not get it from management. <laughs> these guys know what, what my ass is up to more than I do. I know. On here. They can probably tell me where I'm going to be next. <laughs> Well, I like it. It's a good website, though. It's, it's yeah. very informative and it's very, like, good natured, you know? It's yeah. not a bunch of, like, kids arguing with each other, which is nice. It's fans are excited about what you're up to and the music and all that. And they're cool. excited about each other. Yeah. And they're really, they've been really supportive about Jimmy on that stuff. It's cool. And a lot of that, you know, when, when all that happened back in December, I know that couldn't have been easy for you guys, and I don't want to talk about it the whole time you're in here and dwell on it. But um, when, when you found out, you know, just briefly, when you found out what was going on, what had happened, how did the band, you know, respond? What did you guys do? How did you get together? Yeah, we just, uh, we basically took turns. We uh, got it out of our living rooms and took turns staying, you know, groups of like 15 of us just uh, camped out, you know, watching movies and telling stories. And it was actually really therapeutic. And I think we had a great uh, healing process as we still are in that process. But for those like first two weeks where we never left each other's sides, the stories never ended, and the guy was such a magnanimous human being that it was just impossible to tell the same story twice, and every story was just absolutely hilarious. So, you know, I guiltily admit this, but we were pretty much laughing hysterically with each other and crying for two weeks, you know? It was uh, definitely different. You know? no, no guilt in that. You were celebrating his life, talking about all the yeah, things you loved about him. He lived an extraordinary life. Yeah, I remember watching a video of him playing a download, what? just watching from behind the drums, and there's 120,000 people there, and he's just destroying it, like ripping it up. And I was just like, dude, that guy lived the coolest life. You know, like that's when we were kids, that's what he wanted to do. And he got to do it by 28, and he left too early, but he got to do it. And he just killed it, you know? Best drummer I've ever seen. I loved it. And uh, Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater sitting in. And that's the question, because then, you know, the next year he's going to be with you, but he's going to have to go back because Dream Theater's got new stuff. What, yeah. What's the future of the Avengers 7 for you? No, we're just, we're just taking it like one <coughs> step at a time, just baby steps, you know. The first two weeks we didn't know that we were going to be a band, and the, by the third week we're yeah. hell bent on getting the record out and leaving Jimmy, help to leave Jimmy's legacy. And uh, and now we just know that we're playing because Mike Portman is just such an amazing person in our lives and all of our lives and really helped us get, get through, you know, a really dark moment and uh, complete, you know, a vision that had taken a long time that we put together with uh, our brothers, you know, and so we're just doing that and then figuring stuff out from there, you know. M Shadows and uh, Sinister Gates, Avenged Sevenfold, new album coming out called Nightmare, July 27th. Have you guys been in touch with anyone from Slipknot in regards to, you know, losing Paul Gray? Yeah, I've been in touch with, uh, with Corey. And uh, we just we just went through it all. So all you can really do at this point is send the message that you're there for him, and then you just gotta leave it at that. I, I know that when the stuff happened with Jimmy, there's a lot of people that didn't know what to say, and I understand and appreciate that. But at the same time, the people that did reach out, they didn't need to say much. They just, you just need to know that they were there, and that's what I did for Corey. And he said, "Let's meet up on the tour, and we'll talk." You know, like he's obviously crushed right now, and we're still crushed. It's just. 
something you never get over, you kind of just learn to live with it, I guess. It yeah. just sort of comes out of nowhere, you don't see it, and it's just like getting hit by a bus. Yeah, it yes. creates a void that just really never goes away, and I just kind of learn how to live with it. But the excitement of the new album, the tour, the fans are keeping you guys energized. And yeah, there's it's definitely a lot of great. Excited. Yeah, thank you. A lot of great stuff happening right now. And now the questions are going crazy. Yes. What are they? Anything cool? Anything good? Who will make out with Ronnie? Oh. Why would you ever open up for Buck Cherry? You blew them out of the water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> First off, I love Buck Cherry, but it was a co headlining tour. It was fair. We switched on and off every night. Yeah. So it was so fun. Awesome. And uh, will you be playing any songs from the previous albums during the Uproar tour? Absolutely. Kidding me? Yeah, yeah lots of to. lots of old songs. Got yeah. to. Uh, what was the mindset for writing Beast and the Harlot? You were just trying to copy <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, there, here's one. I love Aven I loved Avenged Sevenfold back with Waking the Fall. What caused the dramatic change in sound between back then and the CD CD City of Evil or whatever? It. <laughs> the text didn't finish, but I have a feeling it wasn't going anywhere positive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. I like it. Um, we just uh, were a little bit over the sinking ship of the hardcore scene that we felt we were getting uh, labeled into. Honestly, we just, you know, Waking the Fall to Me isn't really a hardcore record. It's a metal record with just uh, way too many parts in it. I love that record, but we can never write that record again even if we try. And I think uh, when bands repeat themselves, that's when uh, fans get bored and artists get bored of themselves and they start becoming a parody. You write lesser themselves. versions of the same song, you know. So we just do our thing, man. Nothing we can do about that. We just let it out. 